Ball pythons are amazing creatures, and I have one who is named Dinara, who you see here looking at herself. During my quest to discover more about her species, I uncovered some pretty amazing facts, and I'm here to share some of them with you. Hello my hearties, and welcome back to another Heart Scales video. The voice you are hearing right now belongs to Trinity Heart, and today I wanted to put out a fun little video all about ball pythons. Most of us have heard of, seen, held, or even had ball pythons as pets before, and those of us that have know all about their peculiar defense mechanism of curling up into a ball when they're nervous. But what else is there to know about ball pythons? The answer is a lot. But today, I'm going to talk about just five neat facts that I find interesting about them that are beyond just how stinking cute they are. I mean, come on, look at that little face. How cute is that? But <laughs> there is more to them than being really, really ridiculously good looking. So without further ado, let's dig in. Ball pythons are also known as royal pythons. It's widely believed that this name was inspired by royalty, who were said to wear these snakes like living jewelry by African kings and queens. Especially famous for this supposed trend is Cleopatra, and many African tribal leaders, and thus were referred to as royal pythons. Which sort of makes me feel like royalty when I walk around with snakes all over me. Cleopatra is associated very strongly with snakes, as are many Egyptian pharaohs, and even sometimes viewed as the embodiment of Isis, a goddess who would take on the form of a snake when it suited her. I don't know for sure whether royalty did actually wear snakes like jewelry, or if this is just a fun myth that is perpetuated all over the internet. We do know that ancient Egyptians had a strong affinity for snakes, and as ball or royal pythons are native to Africa, it's not out of the question that some royal ladies and gents had a few they like to keep with them. And while it's definitely possible and a cool thought that royalty of long ago all walked around sporting snakes like the latest hot fashion trend, it's more likely that the name Royal Python is simply the English translation of Python Regis, which is the scientific and Latin name of this species. The Igbo people are understood to revere ball pythons and will actually perform funerals where they build small coffins for them if one is killed. Some say they view snakes in general as messengers of the soil goddess, or as ancestors of fellow humans. They are viewed as sacred, essentially symbolizing the earth and perhaps representing their deity, Idemili, the goddess of the ocean and the name of their river. One article I read on this said that the story goes, when a child is born in Idemili, a python slithers to where the baby is kept and curls around it protectively, where it is then admired by both the child and the parents. Visits from snakes are meant to symbolize tidings of some sort, similar to how some people may think doves mean love or dolphins at sea bring good fortune to voyaging ships. I personally find this fascinating, as well as actually pretty inspiring to think how beloved the species are by some people. In the description below, I will share some links for more information for those curious, including a publication of a poem about Idemili by a Nigerian Igbo author by the name of Somto Ihezue. Apologize for any mispronunciation. Hopefully I got all these as close as I could, and I tried my best not to get tongue-tied. It is currently estimated that there are over 4,000 morphs of ball pythons today, but it all started with one albino python that was bred in captivity by a herpetologist named Bob Clark who started showing an interest in snakes back in the 70s. Since then, ball pythons have become wildly popular and are probably the most prolific species of pet snake in the reptile trade today. There are all sorts of combinations of over 250 single gene traits possible now, which means that there are still probably thousands of additional morphs to discover. 
Some of the most common ball python morphs available now include the clown morph, the banana morph, and the yellow belly morph. The rarest morphs include the sunset morph and the mystic potion. If you were to go on Morph Market, a popular site for purchasing reptiles online from breeders around the world, you would likely find around 40,000 ball pythons at any given time, and each one would have a unique and distinct pattern, color, and effect. It's pretty incredible how many reptile keepers and breeders today have and produce thousands of different morphs of ball pythons, and it all started with one albino ball python back in the early 90s. More accurately, they have something called anal spurs that resemble small claws near their cloacas. Cloaca refers to the cavity near their tail used for both excretion and reproductive activities. <laughs> These claws are vestigial, which is to say they are small remnants of something that was once larger or more noticeable. In the case of modern day snakes, these are what's left behind of what was once limbs from around 150 million years ago, hind legs that snakes had at that time before they eventually evolved to have no legs at all. This is an especially cool fact to me because it's an accessible example of ongoing evolution. Based on what I was able to discern so far, it seems that snakes of today still develop leg bones while they are embryos, but because of certain proteins in their genetic code that have essentially been switched off at this point and don't bind together properly, these legs all but disappear before they are born or hatched, leaving only these little pelvic spurs behind. Researchers believe that snakes lost their front legs first and then eventually their hind legs due to their propensity to burrow under the soil. Which brings me to my last fact for the day. You may already know that ball pythons live in western to central Africa, but did you know that they live in savannas, grasslands, and sparse forests? They are typically discovered near open water and around human activity areas, such as plantations and farms, living in burrows underground. When snake hunters are searching out ball pythons to export for the pet trade, they primarily source them from rodent burrows, termite mounds, and hollow tree trunks in and near farmlands, palm oil plantations, and sometimes meager forested areas. So when you're building a naturalistic enclosure for your ball python, you might want to think about adding in some underground hides. Wild ball pythons unfortunately are actually threatened by overcollection for the pet trade, as well as for meat and leather, and by the ever prevalent use of pesticides, as well as expanding agriculture. For this reason, we can be very glad that there are so many captive bred ball pythons now available for keepers to choose from, and the vast majority of us pet owners looking for a new snake have no need to purchase a wild caught animal. That's all for this episode, me hearties. I hope you learned something new while watching this video, or at the very least had fun checking it out. And if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and acquire snakes. I'm leaving off with my own captive bred ball python, Inara, to say goodbye and thank you as always for watching. Bye bye now. He's licking my chin.